in this question uh, he is asking you to find out uh, please have a look at the question is the cpu scheduling uh, so he is asking you to find out uh, average uh, turnaround time uh, and he is asking you to use what uh, okay pre to shortest remaining time uh, processing so it is indirectly what uh, srtm shortest remaining time process uh, okay uh, processing time so indirectly you can call it as srtf uh, okay or pre to shortage of first so meaning is uh, meaning of both is same so you can say pre to shortage of first uh, or you can also say that the uh, shortest remaining time first. So, meaning of both is what the uh, same. Okay. So, he is asking you to find out the turnaround time. So, just uh, first make the GAN chart. So, to find out that. Uh, so, please understand here. We need to make the GAN chart. So, the time always starts at uh, 0. So, at the time 0, which process is available? Only P1 available. So, now understand here. Take the P1. So, P1 requires how much time here? 5 units of time. Uh, so, but you can execute only one unit of time. See, the shortest remaining time, the behavior is that for every one one unit of time, you need to check who is the shortest job. Is that clear? Right? So, for every unit, for every unit, it is not like, okay, when say one one unit of time, for every unit of time, you need to identify who is the shortest job. So, now at the time one, the next process is coming. So, just execute for only one unit of time. So, it requires actually 5, but the next process P2 coming at the time 1. The next process P2 coming at the time 1. So, execute only 1 unit, so 1. So, the remaining time will be 4 here. So, the next, by the time 1, so your P2 is also available. Now, compared to the P1 and P2, who is having the shortest bus time? So, if you observe who is having shortest bus time, P2 is having shortest bus time. So, now P2 requires how much time here? 3. Now, who is having shortest bus time? P2. So, we are going to preempt the P1 and we are going to schedule what the P2 because P2 is having shortest bus time. So, P2 requires 3 and again execute only 1 unit. So, that is 2 and the remaining time will be 2 here because by the time 2, now P3 is also available. Now, P3 is also available but if you observe the bus times here, 4, 2, 3 among the available, who is the next shortest job you are having here? Next shortest job is what? P2 only. So, even though P3 is arrived, okay, P2 is the only shortage job. So, you continue with the P2 only, right? So, continue with the P2, okay, understand here. So, P2 requires how much time here? 3, okay, please understand. Oh, sorry, P2 requires 2, but the next process coming at what time here? After P3, next process coming at the 4. So, till the next time 4, okay, till the next time 4, this is the only shortage job available. Okay, so it means what I am trying to say, no need to execute one one unit of time, you can directly execute how many seconds, two seconds, directly you can execute two seconds, uh, execute the two seconds here, so that is four, so remaining time will be zero, now P2 completed the total execution and the next, now present time four, by the time four, P4 is also available, now what is available, P1 available and P2, P3 available and P4 available. So, among the available, see P2 completed, among the available, who is the shortest job? So, that is your P4. So, take the P4 next, right? So, P4 requires only 1. So, that is a 5. So, that becomes a 0. Now, P4 completed. And next, among the available, who is the next shortest job? So, that is P3. So, P3 requires how much time here? Okay. So, that is the 3. So, that is how much here? 8. So, that is completed. And the last one is what? P1. So, P1 requires uh, 4, so that is the 12. So, that also becomes a uh, 0. Right? So, next, uh, now just tell me the completion times first. Uh, okay? Right? Uh, completion times. Uh, see, what is the definition of the completion time? At what time the process is completing its uh, execution? So, P1 completion time 12. So, P2 completion time, observe here. P2 completion time is what? Uh, 4. And P3 completion time uh, 8. And uh, next, uh, okay, P4. P4 completion time is what? Uh, 5. So, next you can find out the turnaround time. So, what is the formula we have for turnaround time? So, the formula for turnaround time is what? Uh, so, I think everybody knows the uh, turnaround time formula. So, completion time minus uh, arrival time. Completion time minus uh, arrival time. Okay. So, understand completion time is 12. Completion time minus arrival time. So, 12 minus 0. So, that is 12, 4 minus 1, that is 3, 8 minus 2, that is 6, and that is 5 minus 4, so that is 1, okay. So, you can just make the addition of this, so how much is this coming here, so I think this is 12, 
so right uh, so this is i think uh, 10 uh, so i think total is coming up of 22 correct so you need to find out average uh, turn around time uh, so that is 22 divided by 4 uh, so that is how much here 22 divided by 4 uh, so i think 5.50 is that clear so average you need to find out so divided by number of process so 22 divided by 4 uh, so that is the 5.50 so the right answer is what the a a is the right answer so this is how you need to solve the problem okay so in this question he is having the three processes this question is based on the concurrent programming okay so good question right so consider three concurrent processes okay p1 p2 and p3 are shown below which acts as the shared variable d has been initialized to what 100 the shared variable okay d is initialized to what 100 so the p1 is doing some activity so here it is incrementing the d value by 20 and here p2 is the decrementing the value by okay 50 and the p3 is the incrementing the value by what 10 okay the processes are executed on a uniprocessor system running in the time shared operating system so minimum and maximum possible values of the d okay right after uh, three processes have completed execution are x and y so is asking you to find out uh, the value okay y minus x so difference is asking the maximum value you need to find out and the minimum value you need to find out is asking the difference so how you can solve so just understand here initial value of the d is what 100 now so you are having the three processes p1 p2 and p3 so here so please make and understand observe carefully the okay the incrementing and decrementing will happen with the three instructions load and next increment and then store so the first okay we are going to have the load okay second instruction is what increment and the third instruction is what store okay and same thing here so it is saying the loading the value okay into the register and uh, next uh, you decrement the value here and the uh, next third one is what the uh, store here and the same thing here uh, okay this is incrementing so the first you say load uh, and next one is what uh, increment next one is the uh, increment uh, and next one is what the uh, store now okay so what is actually what is happening uh, initial value of the d is given as what uh, 50 now remember uh, so here this one is the incrementing with 20 and uh, that is decrementing with 10 and this decrementing with what uh, 50 that is incrementing with the 10 so 20 50 and 10 please understand uh, so if you observe this carefully so this is the uh, incrementing with what uh, okay 20 and uh, this is decrementing with the 50 this is incrementing with what uh, 10 so what i will do you need to make a okay make a logic uh, you need to make a logic uh, in which way you need to execute so that you will achieve the maximum value in which way you need to execute so that you can achieve a minimum value and remember how many instructions are there here so this having three this having three this having three total nine instructions remember in the nine instructions preemption may occur at any point of time okay after any instruction is that clear? right so increment means don't think general increment means the general increment with only one value general decrement means general decrement you decrement only with one value so let's say you are doing some calculation here okay you do, you are confusing with the decrement you can say decrement by 50 otherwise you write a decrement 50 times okay otherwise you can simply say you are doing some calculation here okay this is the updation so this is the calculation okay calculator and this also same thing calculate increment in the sense calculator okay right so please understand here how you execute to achieve maximum so what i will do is so please understand to achieve maximum what i am doing so first i load the value here i load the value in the register so if i load the value in the register so in this register what is the value you have 100 please understand so what i am doing i am loading the value of okay d so what is the d value here okay see please understand what is the d value d value you are having is what 50 so d value is 100 sorry d value is what 100 please understand here so d value 100 this is the incrementing by 20 just for difference i am writing this is decrementing by 50 
and this is incrementing by 10. So I am writing here. Okay. So I am loading the value of D in the register. So 100 will load karega. So afterwards, uh, I am taking the preemption. Then what I will do? I will execute complete process P2. I will execute complete process P2. So then the value will be decremented by what? Value will be decremented by what? 50. Right? If I execute, I load, I will load this, load kare to 100 and next decrement kare to 50 is a decrement hoga and store. So if I execute complete P2, so decrement by 50. So what is the value of this? 50 here. Now remember, it does not matter. Okay, you completed the P2 and now the D value is 50 because I already loaded the value of a D as a 100 in the register of the P1. Then if I increment by 20, so this will become what 120. And if I store back, so this will become now 120. And next, I will execute the complete P3 here. So P3 will load as 120, increment as what? Okay, so P3 register, so it will load as 120. And next increment by 10, so it will increment as 130. And next store, so now this will become what? 130. Is that it? So if this is the manner if I execute, See how I executed. So I am writing here P1. I executed first instruction. I have taken the preemption. Now the P2. I executed all the instructions. One, two, three. And later I executed P1. So second, third instruction. And later I executed P3. Okay. One, two, three instruction. So if I execute in this order, you are getting what the maximum value. You are getting maximum value. How much? 130, 130. Now, in the same manner, you need to think in which order you have to execute so that you get a minimum value. So that you get minimum value. So, please understand here. So, let us okay, think of that. How you get the minimum value. Okay. Please understand here. So, let us execute. Initial value is the same thing that is already given to you. So, how you get minimum value? In which order you execute, you get minimum value. So, please understand that I am solving this. So, to get the minimum value, first what I will do, I will load the value of a D in the P2 register. So, P2 register I am loading. So, what is that here? 100. And I am taking preemption. See, to get the minimum value, so what I am doing first, the P2, I executed first instruction. I loaded the D value. Okay, D value is 100 in the register. So, I am taking the preemption. Please understand here. So, the next what I am doing, I am executing completely P1, 1, 2, 3. Uh, then what happens? Uh, the value will increment by 10, 20, right? So, this becomes 120. And next I am executing complete P3. See this here, complete P3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, then what happens? Uh, increment by 10, so this becomes 130. And next I am executing process P2, second instruction. Process P2 second instruction decrement by what? 50. So 100 decrement by 50. So how much is that? 50. So then I store. Okay. Then so P2 I am executing third instruction. So now if I store this value in the D. So now the D value becomes how much? 50. So the minimum value. Okay. You can get is what? 50. So please understand here. The maximum value you can get is what? 130. And minimum value you can get is what? 50. So, what is the difference here? Okay, you can just find out that uh, difference. Uh, 130 minus 50. So, what is the answer? 80. Is that clear? So, this is the gate quotient, guys. Is that clear? Right? So, just the only thing is you should have an idea in which order you should execute the process so that you get maximum value. In which order you need to execute so that you get what? Uh, minimum value. Okay. So, based on that, you can solve the problem. So, right answer comes up here is the 80. 80 is the right answer. Is that clear for everyone? Right. Okay, fine.